What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. And earlier this week, I did a video showing you how to set up your VR microphone with a Zoom F8. Today we're gonna to be digging into a camera, specifically the Insta360 Pro, which in my opinion is the simplest and easiest professional grade 360 camera that's out there. And I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up and get it ready to shoot. I am gonna be doing a more in-depth video covering the specifics about this camera later on. So if you wanna learn more about it, make sure you just stick around for those videos when they come out. Now to make it a little bit easier for you guys to follow along and see what I'm doing, and in my opinion, it's a much easier way to control this camera, I'm gonna be doing it through the iPhone app. You can also get it on Android, Mac OS if you're using a computer, or Windows. But to do everything that I'm gonna show you besides actually viewing a preview image, you can do it directly on the camera. It's just a little more cumbersome using only three or four buttons. So first, let's get a battery in it and then an SD card, and that fits right underneath the battery pack in the back. And then we can power it on by pushing the button on the front with a circle on it. And it does take just under a minute to boot up, so if it seems like it's taking a long time, that's a normal thing to happen. Once it's on, you'll wanna navigate using the up and down arrows to the gear icon. This is the settings. You're gonna click that circle button again to enter the settings menu, and then you wanna make sure that Wi-Fi is in AP mode. Then you can use the back arrow to back out to the main menu that we were at, and then use the up and down arrows again to navigate to the Wi-Fi on off button, and make sure that it's set to on, or that it doesn't have the slash through it. You do this by pushing that circle button once you're over the Wi-Fi icon. Once you've done those two things, now you can jump over into your phone and download the app if you haven't already. It's called the Insta360 Pro and its icon looks like this. Now go into your phone settings and then into Wi-Fi and you should see the Insta360 Pro with a bunch of numbers after it. Connect to that and if it asks you for a password, the default password is 8888. 8888, so eight eights in a row. I'll put it on the screen right here. Once it says you're connected, you can go and open up the app that you just downloaded and it should load right up. This is where you can preview the image, calibrate cameras, change recording modes, exposure settings, and start and stop recording or take photos. Everything that you need to do to control this camera can be done right in this app. Before I go into actually setting this up and doing the settings, you'll wanna calibrate the camera. And you're gonna to wanna to do this to every new environment that you bring this camera into so it has the best stitching possible. And then just follow the on-screen instructions. This should take less than 15 seconds to do. Now that it's calibrated, hit done in the upper right-hand corner, and then let's start getting our settings right. I'm gonna jump into the video mode menu, but the settings are basically the same for either photo or your live streaming setups. So the first thing that you'll notice right at the top, there is a live preview. Live preview can be viewed in a couple different ways. There's this long stretched out or equirectangular, or you can have it split into two different cubes if you're using it for your phone and something like Google Cardboard. There's also a full screen mode, and there are four ways to view it in here. First is normal, then you have fisheye, Little Planet, which is pretty fun to play around with, and then Perspective, which is usually what you'll have as your final product. Backing out of that, next to the button we just pushed is a graph icon, and that gives you a little histogram for exposure, and you also have a mute button to turn off and on audio, as well as an X button to turn off all the preview together, and you can just tap it again if you wanna load it up. If you're trying to save battery life on your phone, I would definitely recommend turning off the preview when you don't need it. Now finally diving into the settings, we're gonna start in the general tab. You have your mode and there is three different ones in here. There's normal, which is just your regular recording. There's high frame rate, which is recording at 120 frames per second. And then you have a time-lapse mode where you can set intervals for different types of recordings for time lapses. Below that is the content type. You either have 360 or 360 3D. I'm not really doing any 360 3D video, so I'm just gonna leave that on 360 pano. Then you have real-time stitching, and what this is doing is taking all six of those cameras and stitching it as you record it, so when you bring your card and put it into your computer, it's already done and has the stitch for you. Now that's pretty awesome, and why wouldn't you shoot like that? Well, doing that takes up a ton of processing power, so you actually have to go into a lower resolution to be able to record and stitch at the same time. If you're looking for ease of use and the easiest way to shoot 360, then you'll definitely wanna just turn that on because then you don't have to worry about stitching it together in a separate software once you get it on the computer. But if you want the best image quality possible, you'll wanna turn that off so you can shoot at the full resolution of this camera. Back in the menus, you have all of your resolutions, so 8K, 6K, 5K, and 4K. Now, this isn't your normal 16 by 9 8K resolution that you'd see on like a computer screen or your phone, and it's a little bit too much to go into right now, but I did find a really fantastic article kind of covering the whole topic, and I'll throw a link to that in the description below if you wanna learn more about it. Below resolution is the flat color mode, 
And this is basically a log or flat color profile that we used for color grading later on. Again, if you want ease of use, you're gonna to wanna to turn this off. And if you wanna have the most control and best quality image, you're gonna to wanna to turn this on. Lastly is an audio gain slider, and we'll be recording most of our audio separate from the camera, so we don't have to worry about this audio gain or audio levels. Next tab, and I promise these last two will be quick. The first one is exposure, and there's three different modes in here. There's auto, manual, and isolated. The first two you probably already know about, and the isolated one means that it's gonna expose each camera separately based on what's in the shot. So if there's a sun or bright object in the shot, it's gonna expose that shot a little bit darker than one that is more shadow or in a darker area. I like to put mine on manual and then you have all your normal camera settings so you can change your ISO, your shutter speed, and your white balance. The last tab is property and this is some of the image properties like brightness, saturation, sharpness, and contrast. And you can play around with these to get a look that you like, but I usually end up just leaving it on default because I think it looks pretty good right out of camera. Now you've changed all your camera settings and you're ready to start shooting. All you need to do now is just hit that big red button down on the bottom and you're ready to go. That's all I have for you guys today. If you wanna learn more about 360 and VR post-processing, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell notification so you get notified when I put up new videos. And if you have any questions about setting up 360 cameras, make sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.